Hi, this is Cameron Snow with Denomics.com. In this video, I'm going to be discussing Denomics' new CO2 storage analysis capabilities. Let's get started. So within Denomics, we now offer the ability to calculate the CO2 storage potential for each of your zones. To do this, you'll heavily leverage the petrophysical work that you've already done on your wells, and then we'll basically use that analysis to calculate the storage capacity. Now there are a few special considerations we need to make when considering this type of workflow. First of all is what is our storage type? We have options for saline aquifer and residual hydrocarbon zone storage. With the saline aquifer, we'll need to decide on our irreducible water saturation. And with the residual hydrocarbon zone, we'll need to understand both our irreducible water saturation, as well as our residual hydrocarbon profile. We'll need to understand our uh, storage area. In this case, we're going with a default of one kilometer square. So that is the area available for CO2 storage. We'll need to choose which type of reservoir flag we wanna use. In this case, I'm interested in using a net reservoir flag We'll need to decide if we want to use our total or effective porosity for our storage calculations. And we'll need to apply an efficiency factor. When it comes to uh, some of the more complex parameters like the irreducible water saturation and the residual hydrocarbon source, we give you a number of options. In the irreducible saturation, you can choose to use a, an input user value for each zone or you can choose to pull in, for example, the data from your saturation height modeling, where you could use, for example, your multi, uh, mercury injection capillary pressure data, centrifuge data, or you could use something like the uh, FOIL methods, which are a bulk volume of water method. We use that to calculate our irreducible water saturation, which is shown here in this track. We'll then need to decide on our residual hydrocarbon source, in this case, we have options available for our user value and to use our flush zone saturation. In this case, we're using the flush zone saturation. You'll notice here at the top of the Parkman formation, we do have a residual hydrocarbon profile. And the shading between these two curves provides us with a uh, visualization of what our available uh, storage is with respect to our irreducible saturation and our residual hydrocarbon. Next, we'll need to decide on how to calculate the density of our CO2. We have built-in methods to use the ideal gas law, a, essentially a lookup table from the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or a hybrid method, which combines the two. Uh, you can also input a user value if you wish. We're gonna use the hybrid method it should be noted that the hybrid method um, utilizes both the pressure and the temperature on a step-by-step -step basis to calculate your CO2 density. So you need to make sure to have a good understanding of your temperature profile and of your pressure profile. Uh, for the temperature profile, we're gonna use the temperatures that we set up in the uh, saturation uh, module. And for our CO2 pressure source, we're gonna use a hydrostatic pressure that we set up in our pore pressure module. And once we've done this and we've set all these selections, it then calculates on a zone by zone basis, the storage capacity for CO2. And in this case, we can see that, that uh, you know, for our teapot formation, we're calculating around 260 kilotons of CO2 storage available uh, within the one kilometer of this well bore, and around uh, 700 kilotons for the Parkman formation uh, for the area surrounding this well bore. All right, um, I know this was a very brief uh, tutorial. It's just meant to provide a high level overview. If you have any specific questions, you can always reach out to us at www.denomics.com. Thank you.